Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, it's been a great year. Let's get started. It's time now for my annual prediction of the features that are coming to the Sony Alpha cameras. Now we've all heard the rumors and we've seen the patent filings, but as always, my predictions are based on Sony's past release history, together with present technology and the demand from the filmmaking community. First, with the release of the A93, Sony has clearly got us all excited for a global shutter in the Alpha cameras. Now, I don't think I have to convince anyone here that there's a problem with rolling shutter in the entire Alpha line. And a global shutter would not only solve that, but would cause all of us to exchange these little puppies for new cameras. And that's why Sony's gonna bring it to us. My prediction is that global shutter will become the new standard in all Alpha cameras, much the way 10-bit color has become. But the big question I'm sure you're asking is when? When will the global shutter be in all of the Alpha cameras? Well, it's going to happen first with the A7S IV. That's right, they'll be in A7S IV, and that one feature alone will cause people to trade in their A7S III. Now, there are a number of reasons why the A7 IV will be the first Alpha camera to receive a global shutter. First, it is next in line for an update, but also it has a low megapixel count, similar to the A9 III. But when will that happen? Well, it's gonna be difficult for them to release a global shutter in the A7 IV without first giving us a global shutter in the cinema line. And that includes the FX3. So my prediction is that most likely by the end of this year, Sony will at least announce a global shutter for its entire cinema line. Yeah, write that down. But sadly, getting a global shutter in all of the Alpha cameras is probably going to take at least three years. Yeah, write that down too. Sorry. Another feature that we know is coming is internal RAW recording. Now, I think we've all heard that the reason we don't have internal RAW in our cameras is because of legal issues. But those legal issues will get resolved. Sort of like the taxation on uh, the record limits that were on cameras, uh, that went away. Uh, this will go away as well. RAW recording will be coming to a camera near you. But again, sadly, it's gonna take some time because it's gonna have to go into the higher end cameras first and trickle their way down. So we're probably, mm, we're probably three years away from seeing it in an alpha camera. So not this update, but the next update. Now next, you can expect internal ND filters in alpha cameras. Yeah, I said it. I know they've been saying that it's impossible, that you can't get both image stabilization and built-in neutral density filters. Well, I don't believe it, and I'm asking you not to believe the lie either. There's a built-in neutral density filter in this uh, ZV-1. Yeah, it can be done. It's a trump card that Sony is holding, and they're waiting to play it when they've run out of other things to give us and make us buy new cameras. Now, there are plenty of other features that Sony has that it could easily put into its cameras that would cause us to want to trade in our old camera for new ones. One would be internal recording from a wireless source. Yeah, that's exactly what DJI did with the Osmo Pocket 3, and it's selling like hotcakes. Do you think Sony hasn't noticed that it's selling like hotcakes? Well, we're gonna find out. My prediction is that Sony isn't as stupid as some might think and we'll see internal wireless recording from a Sony, not a DJI, wireless microphone. Oh, and I think it'll also be 32-bit float because that seems to be the standard. Now, I do want to temper my prediction with the fact that Sony has not always done what's in its best interest. And if it just now is figuring out what we want in a wireless microphone system, well then it's going to be several years before we see it because Sony has a very long lead time. But if they've been spying on their competitors, like I think they are, well, we'll see it pretty soon. Oh, and you at home, if you would hit the like button and consider subscribing, that would be completely awesome. Oh, and then there's other features like Open Gate where the entire sensor is recorded and then you can crop up or down in post. That's a feature that I'm almost positive will be in a Sony camera if I live long enough. It's gonna take some time for them to get to the bottom of their list, and I think Open Gate is at the bottom of their list. 
And I say that because open gate seems like a simple thing to give us, but it does require more processing power and faster storage. And they're going to want to use their processing power and faster storage on things like global shutter rather than on open gate. And then there's the features that I predict that are coming that are going to be sort of sprinkled in amongst the larger features because they won't be enough to actually cause you to get a new camera, but added together will create a lot of excitement. The first would be anti-theft protection. Now, I also predict that Sony will start putting some internal memory into their cameras. Now, we all want a better screen on the back of our cameras, but I think Sony has made it very clear that they're not interested in giving us a great screen on the back of our Alpha cameras. Oh, and would it be too much to ask for a camera that doesn't overheat? Well, apparently it is too much to ask because Sony has been producing a number of cameras in the EV line and the compact line that overheat. But they really can't have uh, overheating issues in the Alpha line because professionals just aren't going to stand for that. So my prediction is that the new Alpha cameras will have a beefier body and they may even have a fan or at least some way of getting rid of more heat. Because as more and more features are added to these cameras, well, that's gonna take a lot more processing and it's gonna generate a lot more heat. Now we can also suspect that Sony will release the unexpected. And how do we know that? Well, because Sony has released a number of things that we didn't expect. Focus breathing compensation, for example. No one expected that, but now, we can't live without it. Focus mapping was another thing we didn't see. And the new AI autofocusing chip, well, that was a welcome surprise as well. So you can count on Sony to sprinkle in a number of new innovations in these cameras. And that's one of the things that makes Sony awesome. So Sony will obviously continue to innovate and come up with great features for these cameras. But there is some bad news. The bad news is that the odds of Sony coming out with a camera this year that has all these features is next to zero. In fact, in the next two years or three years, very close to zero. Sorry, because in my last 30 years of filmmaking experience, the perfect camera has always been out of reach and it will continue to be so because as soon as you get there, there'll be something else that you want. Trust me. But the good news is the odds of me being correct and all my predictions here today are close to zero. For example, last year I predicted that Sony had completely abandoned the A7S line. And now I'm telling you that there will be an A7S 4 But I stand by my prediction that it will never be or never have all the features of the FX3. And if you want to know why, well, just watch that little video over there. It's my most popular video to date. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it.